Good morning, everybody. It is so good to see you here in the sanctuary this morning, and it's good that you are joining us online for those who are, are joining us uh, remotely this morning. We are gathered together by the Spirit of God as one people. We are gathered in this place, in this time, as the people of God come to worship. Would you join me in prayer this morning as we enter into worship? Gracious God, we do thank you for today. We thank you for the blessings that you have given to us and the ability and the opportunity to come into this place. We thank you for your grace that fills us, your love that surrounds us and is never-ending. And Lord, may we in this time and in this place know your spirit that opens our hearts and our minds to your message. May we trust in you in all things. And we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Our opening scripture this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 58. It reads, Shout it aloud and do not hold back. Raise your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their rebellion and their descendants of Jacob their sins. For, the, for day after day they seek me out. They seem eager to know my ways as if they were a nation that does what is right and is not forsaken the commands of its God. They ask me for just decisions and seem eager for God to come near them. Why have we fasted, they say, and you have not seen it? Why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? Yet on the day of your fasting, you do as you please and exploit your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Is this the kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day for people to humble themselves? Is it only for bowing one's head like a reed and for lying in sackcloth and ashes? Is, it, is that what you call a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the kind of fast that I have chosen? To loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke. To set the oppressed free and break every yoke. Is it not to share your food with the hungry and provide the poor wanderer with shelter? When you see the naked to clothe them and not turn away from your own flesh and blood. Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say, here am I. Let us join now in singing together a song we learned a few months ago, Walking with Thy God. To pray for every nation and to honor all creation. This is walking with thy God. To do justice and love mercy. Find water for the thirst. This is walking with thy God. He has shown me. He has shown me. He has shown me what is good. He has shown me. He has shown me. Sister, every brother, this is walking with thy God. He has shown me, he has shown me, he has shown me what is good. He has shown me, he has shown me. Show me what is good. Put an end to war, to make plow 
church out of sorts. This is walking with thy God. Let the peace of God inside you. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. This is walking with thy God. He has shown thee. He has shown thee. He has shown thee what is good. He has shown thee. He has shown thee. He has shown thee. This is walking with thy God. Every everyone is equal, as God's children, as God's people. This is walking with thy God. He has shown me. He has shown me. He has shown thee what is good. He has shown thee. He has shown thee. He has shown thee what is
this morning as we come into a time of prayer. Um, they'll know we are Christians by our love. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. I'm shared in Sunday school uh, for those families who are losing loved ones, are going through times of grief, uh, prayers for um, people who, who have lost jobs, um, and prayers for direction and focus as they, do, as they uh, find out what's next. Are there other prayer requests to share this morning? Let us go to our Lord in prayer as the people of God this morning. Gracious God, we come today. We come into this place as your people gather today. We are gathered uh, across time and across space as those who have joined us virtually. For we are your people. Lord, we lift before you those needs that we have. We pray, Lord, for those who are in need of healing today. Those who are struggling with illness, cancer, chronic illnesses, ongoing physical illnesses, ongoing emotional and mental struggles as well. We pray for each one of these illnesses, Lord recognizing that when we are weak, you are made strong within us. And we do pray for healing. And we thank you that you are with us. Lord, for those who are grieving, we pray for comfort. Lord, for those who are struggling in different ways, we pray for direction. 
We pray, Lord, that you will provide what needs to be provided for, for jobs, housing, finances. For, Lord, we know that you do provide for us in ways that we can only imagine. And we pray that prayer for our church this morning, Lord, that you provide for us. We pray, Lord, for our country, for our states and our, our local uh, govern, governments and our officials. Lord, may you give them wisdom. Draw them together, Lord, in unity. Help them to work for all people. And we also, Lord, lift before you our, our blessings, the blessings of family and friends, the blessings of provisions and of your presence, among so many other things. And we ask all of this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Matthew. These are uh, some short verses from Jesus' teaching that we normally uh, equate or as, as part of the Sermon on the Mount. If you have your Bibles with you, you'll notice these come directly after what we call the Beatitudes from Matthew 5. And we're going to begin reading at verse 13. Two very simple images that Jesus gives to his followers and to us about what it means to live a faithful life in the world today. Jesus says in beginning of verse 13, You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people put a light Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they might see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. Two very simple and basic images that Jesus gives to us about what it means to live a faithful life. I don't know about you all, I tend to salt my food too much, and I know I'm going to pay for that one day. But Jesus takes this simple, simple element that has so many different uses and reminds us of its importance, of its importance to be used properly. Salt, was, salt can be used for so many things, from flavoring food to preserving food. Different types of salt can be used to, to melt ice and do so many other different things. But Jesus takes this simple image of salt and basically says, if it loses its saltiness, if it loses its purpose, if it loses what it was designed for, made for, created for, what good is it? Can you imagine if you picked up your salt shaker at home and you went to put it on your, your food, your fries, what, whatever it might be, and there was no taste to it? Kind of be worthless, wouldn't it? What about if you put it on your popcorn? And there was no flavor added to your popcorn. You'd probably just take what was in the salt shaker for whatever reason and recognize, okay, it's no good anymore and throw it out. Exactly what Jesus says. For Jesus recognized this simple image of salt, this simple material of being very important for us 
but worthless if it loses its saltiness. And I'm not sure that salt could actually lose its saltiness. But Jesus says, what if? And no metaphor is perfect. But Jesus takes salt and says, what if it loses its saltiness? It's no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. Thrown in the garbage can and taken to the dump. He also then goes on to use a different image, that of light. And we, we may be familiar with that, that children's song, This Little Light of Mine. I remember learning that in Sunday school when I was very young. This is the scripture this comes from. Jesus says, you, he tells you and I, you are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. No one takes a lamp and lights it and then sticks it under a bowl. Now, we don't use oil lamps often, but we do use candles. And what would happen if we lit a candle and stuck it under a bowl? Well, two things that happened pretty quick. Number one, the light, it wouldn't shine light unless it was like maybe a clear bowl. But the candle would also go out very quickly, wouldn't it? It cuts off the oxygen, and the flame of the candle would go out. There was really no purpose to it. So as Jesus says, you don't light a lamp and you don't put it under a bowl. Instead, you put it on a stand. You put it in a big candle holder. You put it in a place where it's going to light that entire space, that entire room. And this next sentence is what Jesus says to us that wraps up both of these images together. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they might see your good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. That they might see your good deeds and glorify your Father who is in heaven. The saltiness of sodium spread on food, spread to preserve food. The light of a candle that lights up a dark space. Those are our good deeds that Jesus says to us, glorifies our Father who is in heaven. And I think that's so important for you and I to recognize today. And because I think light candles like that are more familiar to us, especially in this context, we're going to talk specifically about light and darkness this morning. I want you to think for yourselves, picture in your mind, if you will, a time where you have been in a very physically dark place. Maybe the middle of the night, and the power went out. Or maybe you've been out camping somewhere and it's a moonless night, you can't see the stars, and it's very, very dark. The place where we usually go camping in the summertime is known, I, th I think it's actually in that area, is a, I think they call it a world dark, it's not the exact words, a world dark place, we'll just call it that. Not because it, it's, it's a bad place, but because it can be so dark there, because there's no artificial light, that you can really see the heavens and the stars. But if it's cloudy, if there's no moon, it can get really dark really quickly. And so it's good to have a flashlight around. It's good to have some kind of light to show what's around us, to light our path, if you will.
Jesus says this life that we shall make, these good deeds that we, we do are those things that glorify God who is in heaven. I think that's so vitally important for you and I today. How do we shine our light? What does that mean for us? I think most, most times, I, think, I know I have at times, thought, you know, I can't do anything. I can't do anything big. I can't do those big things that might make a huge difference in the world today. I'm not going to be able to stop some great evil. I'm not going to be able to stop some big thing from happening by, by the things that I do. Yet it's oftentimes not the big things, the big acts that make a difference. Would you go to the next slide? Many of you may know this, this gentleman on the screen behind me uh, as Gandalf from Lord of the Rings. Uh, he has a great, great quote in the Lord of the Rings movies. He says, some believe that it is only great power that can hold evil in check. But that is not what I have found. I have found that it is the small, everyday deeds of ordinary folk that keep the darkness at bay. Small acts of kindness and love. Small acts of kindness and love hold the evil at check, at bay. Hold the evil in check. Just think about that for a minute. You and I might not be able to do great big acts. We may not have a lot of power, a lot of clout. Yet you and I can do everyday simple acts of goodness, of love, of grace that do make a difference in people's lives, that do make a difference in our community, that do make a difference in our homes, our church, our schools, our workplace, wherever we may be. And how important that is for us. I want to bring this, this imagery up into uh, today a little bit. We don't use candles often, except maybe when the power goes out. But even then, what do we reach for first? Usually we reach for a flashlight first, don't we? We reach for a flashlight in our homes or wherever we may be. And that's a good thing to have available. It's a good thing to have our, our flashlight available and, and with fresh batteries in it so that we can use it when we need it. I want to show you this little flashlight here, a little simple flashlight. And I want to equate this flashlight with faith. If you were to carry this flashlight around and say, this is my faith, It's a good thing. It's a very good thing to have this. But you know what? Our faith, if it's not used, it's kind of like that salt that loses its saltiness or the lamp that gets put under a bowl. We have to turn on the flashlight. We have to use the flashlight to shine into dark places, to shine goodness where there's darkness. We have to be able to look into different places and show that light where it may be needed. And I'm sorry if I blinded any of you out there this morning. It is so important that we do so. Scripture tells us that faith without works is what? Is dead. Faith without works is dead. Jesus is saying the exact same thing here. That our faith has to be shown in the things that we do. Our faith is shown by the light that we shine into the darkness, into those dark places. Our faith is shown when we take our faith and put it into action to season the world around us, if you will. To season our communities for the glory of God. By doing small acts, by doing small things, by 
being the people of God in the world today. You and I are called to be so much more than just churchgoers. We are called to be the salt in the world, to be the light in the world today. So how do we keep our, our candle burning? How do we keep our, our batteries charged, if you will? We do that in several different ways. One of those ways is coming to church and worshiping together. We receive the encouragement of others. We hear the word of God. We're able to worship, and our batteries are charged. Our oil lamps are filled, if you will. They're also filled as we read scripture, do devotions on our own. They're filled as we pray, not only for ourselves, but for one another. Dare I say they're also filled as we do good things, as we do the good works that God has given us to do. How many of you all at home have a, a, a flashlight or something that you leave on a charger? That's a good thing to have it fully charged when it's needed. I think sometimes us as Christians, us as believers, we stay on the charger. And we never use that power that is within us. That power that is given to us through Christ to do the things that we're called to do. We stay on the charger in such a way that we just sit there. Instead of being used, instead of shining our light, doing the things that we're supposed to do. So this morning, I want to challenge you to find a place this week to shine your light. To find a place in your community. To find a place to do a good work. It may be in your office. It may be where you work. Someone there may be hurting. It may be something that just pops up during the week. You, you come upon a situation while at the store. It may be in school where you find someone who's struggling. You may come across a need that you can meet. It could be a financial need. It could be a need for someone who needs food. It could be someone who just needs someone to listen to, listen to them, to share with them. Where are you going to shine your light this week? What are you going to do to shine the grace and the love of God into someone's life this week? As a reminder of that, we have a special little gift for you this morning. This morning, as a reminder, don't just carry your faith with you. Don't just carry it, stick it in your pocket, put it in your purse. But take this and shine it. Use it. Thank you. It's the right aim. Use it. Use your faith. The little sticker on there that, that you put on there says, You are the light of the world. It's a reminder that you and I of the light of the world. There's one back there for each one of you to take, to use, and to be a reminder to do those good deeds that you've been called to do, that we've been called to do, and how important that is for the glory of God. Yes, we'll get good feelings. We may feel good about doing these things, but ultimately it's for the glory of God in our world today. Would you pray with me today? Gracious God, we thank you for all that you have given to us, all that you have done for us. For it is so, God, at times it's hard to do those, those acts. 
of grace and kindness in our world. Oftentimes we get scared. Oftentimes we're tired and weary. And we don't see what you've placed before us. Lord, this week may we be light in the darkness. May we shine your light, the light of Jesus Christ, into our world today. Lord, we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. One of those, those things that, that helps refill our oil or recharge our batteries, whatever image you want to use, is our communion celebration as we gather uh, each week at the table of God to celebrate communion, to celebrate what Christ has done for us. As we prepare our hearts for communion this morning, we're going to sing uh, one of the, the familiar hymns of the church, uh, Be Thou My Vision. Oftentimes we, we struggle for what God has planned for us, but as we seek the vision that God places in us, as we trust in God's vision for our lives, we begin to see what God is truly doing. So let us sing together, Be Thou My Vision. Jesus, throughout his ministry, placed before his followers and places before us 
a vision of what the world could be as you and I, as his followers, lived out their faith. Think about that for a minute. What would it really look like in our world today if you and I lived out our faith each and every day? If we loved mercy, not only receiving mercy, but giving mercy. If we walked humbly with our God each day, if we truly worked to see the kingdom of God here on earth, to see God's will done here on earth as it is in heaven, can you imagine the difference our world, our country would be like if we truly, as believers, did that each day? That is the vision that we have before us. That is the light that we are called to shine and the salt that we are called to be each and every day. And I think Jesus, even in this last meal, gives us that vision or reminds us of that vision in a very powerful way. As he met with his disciples, he knew what was coming. He knew what was going to be ahead of him. Yet he calmly ate with his disciples. And as the meal came to a close, he picked up a loaf of bread from the table. And he held it before them and he blessed it. And he said to them, this bread is my body, which is given for you. Whenever you eat of it, remember me. And he passed the loaf around and they ate it together. When they had finished the bread, he took a cup from the table and he said to them, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink of it, remember me. And again, he passed the cup around and all of the disciples drank from it. And this is a vision, a vision of God's grace, God's acceptance, God's redemption for the world around us. Pray with me. Gracious God, thank you for today, for all that you have given to us, for all that you have provided for us, for your redemption, your salvation, for your vision. Lord, let us run the course that you have given to us. Let us be fulfilled, energized, and renewed as we worship together. And then may we go forward from this place. May we go forward and shine our light in the world around us. Shine your light that you have given to us in those dark places. Lord, always help us to remember your sacrifice, your gifts, and may we share them with those around us. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to encourage you this morning to give of your tithes and offerings. In, in doing so, that is one way in which you can participate in the life and the ministry of the church, not only here in Dallas, but it, as it expands as well. Uh, there's an offering box in the back as you leave this morning. You can also give online by going to DallasFirstCC.com, and there's a, a button, a link there to go and, and be able to give online. I want to share with you just one, one way in which your offerings and your gifts have helped the community this week. Uh, we had the, the, the dental van who was here this week, and it was, an, it was an interesting day in the dental van, but there was a mother and daughter who came. The daughter actually had the appointment. 
and the mother just came with her. The mother was able to, to have been seen as well because of some scheduling uh, things that, that happened. Um, not because of what Shell did, but because of uh, people's cancellations. But they were, they were very grateful that this church would open up its building, that this church was here and willing to open its building to host the dental van, to allow people to come in to a dry, warm place, to find the help that they needed to, to relieve the, the, the oral pain, the teeth, teeth issues that they might have. And they were just very grateful for that. And it is your offerings, your gifts, that help make that possible. So thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for your gifts. Um, there's a lot more that we can do. And we encourage you to continue to give, to increase your gifts as you can, because there are our needs. We, we do have needs in the congregation, financial needs. And uh, you can talk to me or, or Marcia maybe if you have questions about that. But we encourage you to give for the continued ministry of Dallas First Christian here in Dallas, but also in other places as well. Uh, some other announcements for this morning. Uh, we have our, yeah, our, our men's Bible study meets at 8.30 on Thursday mornings. Uh, we encourage you to come as you can. Uh, the Christian Women's Fellowship Group, uh, our women's group meets this coming Wednesday at 1 o'clock downstairs, and we encourage women to come and be a part of that. There's some more information in the bulletin. If you'd like to know more about that, uh, it's there, and you can you can check that out and see what's see what's going on in their lives or not in their lives in in their ministry and the, their meetings as well. Um, our Zoom prayer meetings and gatherings are are happening as well. If you don't get the codes for those, uh, please let us know, and we'll get you those Zoom invitations as well. Our Lenten devotionals are coming up. Uh, we need some Lenten devotionals. There's a, a, a flyer on the back there as you leave, uh, right outside the door. Lenten de devotionals are fairly easy to write. Find a scripture, write down some thoughts, a story, a poem. Um, that doesn't have to be long, and then a short prayer. Our theme this year is From Fear to Faith. And it's a topic that talks about how oftentimes we are afraid of the things around us we're afraid of moving forward. We're afraid of the unknown. Yet we are called to step out in faith, step out in trust that God is providing, that God is with us in all things. So we encourage you uh, to, to write one of those, to pick up a, a brochure out there that gives some more instructions and some scriptures you can use, and get those turned in as soon as possible. Our prayer brochure is, is out also back there. Our, our new newsletter is back there as well. We encourage you to pick those up and be aware of, of what's happening in the life of the church uh, around us. Two other quick announcements. Uh, at, right after worship, if you would like to, we encourage you to come to the front of the sanctuary. We're going to have just a time of prayer for the church. Uh, a lot of things happening, uh, some, some questions about what's, what's going on. So we're just going to gather up here for five minutes of prayer, five, ten minutes of prayer together. If you'd like to join us, uh, you don't have to pray out loud if you don't want to. But we encourage you to come and be a part of that as well. And then, uh, as we've been talking about the last couple of weeks, we are redoing our Constitution and Bylaws. And we had a good meeting last week with Kathy Myers Ward, one of our regional ministers. And we're in the process of revising those uh, some more. Next Sunday after church, we will have a short meeting, probably in the, in the parlor, uh, to, to go over those once again. And then we will be having a congregational meeting on March 5th, uh, right after church, to vote on, on ex accepting and adopting the new Constitution bylaws. So though the revised, newly revised, most recent revision will be available next Sunday for you to look at some more. Uh, if you'd like to, the, the one version is on the table still for you to look at. Now, Marsha, are there any other announcements? We do have the food bank, the, the fill our cart coming up next Sunday. We encourage you to bring food. Uh, non-perishables, other, other things to give to the Dallas Food Bank. Yes, 
right, Jim? It's worth it. We're not going to get the first one. There's some more information in the bulletin about that. And the, the Week of Compassion does reach out in times of disaster, not only here in our country, but around the world, through different partners and different uh, other uh, agencies. Uh, the Week of Compassion is our, the outreach arm of our church, but it's not just for disaster relief. They also go into places and help with development, with clean water or sanitation or electrical uh, projects, all sorts of different things to not only uh, help in disasters, but help in development of communities uh, around the world. So we encourage you to uh, read some more about Week of Compassion here. Uh, plan on, on staying after, after worship on the 26th for uh, the soup and the cookies, and we encourage you to, to be able to generously give to Week of Compassion as well. And we'll have more about that in the, in the next week as well. We do have one, one of the other... Um, Thing before we have our closing song, we have a, one birthday who's with us today. Uh, Dave, your birthday is coming up. <laughs> so, can we sing happy birthday to Dave this morning? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Dave. <laughs> Would you stand for our closing song? Our closing song this morning is a reminder that we are called to be God's people. We are God's people in this place. We are God's people in the world, wherever we may be. We are called to be God's people. Having recharged our batteries, having filled our lamps, may we go forth and shine the light of God into the darkness. May God's light shine within us and through us into the world around us. May we go in God's strength and power. Amen. Amen.